So in the last video, Carly and I looked at some of the objects that you can look at in the night sky, particularly here in the Southern Hemisphere, um, with the naked eye. Um, but perhaps some of you are more interested in getting out there and exploring what's in the cosmos a little bit. And while Carly's a radio astronomer, she wasn't particularly interested in, in looking at things in the visible bandwidth. So I've brought in Dr. Brad Tucker here, and we're going to explore a question that we get asked quite often, which is, what telescope do I want to buy to go and look at the night sky? Yeah, and, it, and it's not a straightforward question. There's not just, go get this one. There's different styles of telescopes that you're about to see that do slightly different things. And price factors into it, mirror size factors into it. So there's a few different things that we have to think about. It affects us actually professionally as well, as you'll explore soon, Pete. But when we see different styles of telescopes, so, you know, what are they doing? Why do we have these? Exactly, yeah. And so I guess I want to start with this uh, little telescope here. Um, so this style of telescope is called a refractor telescope. Um, so it has a, a lens in the end here, which is um, the, the wider of the lenses. And then down the far end, it's got a, a much smaller lens here. And so what this big lens does is it focuses that light down into a point. And so when you look at it through here, you get the image in your eye. So it's essentially just a long tube with a lens on the end, right? Exactly. Um, and this is, and this one in particular is of interest, Brad. Um, and because this was the first telescopes that astronomers used. That's right. You know, when the telescope was invented, uh, it wasn't invented by Galileo, by the way. Galileo was just the first to say, hey, this thing useful on Earth, what if I point it up? And he took a refractor. In fact, it was only four centimeters wide. So when we measure it, we're talking about the width here. So this is essentially the same size that Galileo used. Yeah, exactly. And this telescope, like you said, wasn't originally used for astronomy. And that's one of the strengths of this type of telescope, if you wanted to, to buy one of these for yourself, is that this one will keep the image upright, so exactly how you see it. So they're very good general purpose telescopes. You can also use these telescopes for things like bird watching or, or ter terrestrial things, as well as looking up into the sky as well. But is there a downside to them? Yeah, so there's only so big you can make these because the, the size that you make this lens at the end is directly related to how long you need to make the telescope. And so if you want to get a bigger lens, eventually you're going to have a telescope that's just far too long to be practical to and, use. And so this is why professionally on our big telescopes, as you'll go visit soon, we don't use refractors because there's just a limit to how big of a building you can make them. Yeah, you can't have buildings that are <laughs> kilometers long to, to accommodate the telescope size. Unfortunately. Well. Exactly. Um, so did you want to talk us about this next type of telescope? Right? Yeah, so this is, this is, this specific model is what we call a Dobsonian, but they're also called Newtonians. And this is a, a good combination that builds off the aspects of a refractor, but a little bit more portability, but also then gives you a little bit more visibility. Now, now as Pete mentioned, with the small refractor we just looked at, it's the size of the mirror or the lens that matters. So the bigger the mirror or lens, the more you'll see. It's essentially just a giant light bucket. And this is actually a relatively straightforward one. This literally has a mirror at the bottom of this tube, and the light comes through, bounces off the mirror, comes back to the eyepiece. So it's pretty straightforward. You just have a mirror, so you're reflecting the light. You're not refracting the light, as with the other telescope. So you can make the mirrors bigger than a lens. But the downside, unlike the refractor, which keeps the image upright, this is reflecting the light, which means everything appears upside down. Right, Pete? Yeah, so that means if you want to use it for something like bird watching, well, you're going to see the birds flying upside down or something like that. So it might not be as useful for that, but there are real advantages to these and that comes with their cost. Mm. And so if you're looking for the best bang for your buck, for instance, you can get quite a large mirror for these for quite a cheap um, telescope. They're also uh, like I Ikea style, I like yes. to say, they, they come flat pack. Um, and so they're easy to put together, they're very cheap and they're quite robust. Yes. And so if you're dealing with children or, or anything like that, they, they can take a little bit of a beating and, and they're really good for their price. And that's the advantage of, of these telescopes. Exactly, it kind of fits in that middle range between being usable, but also seeing things. Because, you know, something like this, you may say, all right, well, what can you see? 
I mean, you can see probably anything that you will want, right, Pete? Yeah, exactly. So if you want to look at, um, you know, the rings of Saturn, for instance, you would re resolve those yeah. quite easily with this. Um, the moons of Jupiter are quite easy to see. Uh, the red spot on Jupiter. Uh, and then you can even look at far away things like nebula and, and star clusters and dwarf galaxies and, and all of these objects and far more than we've talked about in this course. And anything that you can imagine, you can sort of see with, with a telescope like this, which makes them really good. Yeah. So, so it has a huge benefit. Um, it allows you to do a little bit more in refractor. It works differently, though, than refractor. But there are other ones, and we, we have a third. Now, this is a little bit different than the other two, right, Pete? Yeah, so this is um, sort of combining the best of all the worlds um, in, in this sort of telescope here. So this is called a, a Mead or a schmidt is the is the type of telescope that we've got here. And so what we've got here is the collecting area is quite large, sort of similar to the, reflect, the reflector that we've got. The light comes in and it bounces off a secondary mirror again. And then it goes, so the primary mirror, and then it goes up to the top where it hits a secondary mirror. And then it shoots down to it. There's a hole in the primary mirror where the light comes out and then it comes out through the eyepiece here. And so you can see you've got an eyepiece that's very similar to the refractor telescope, but you've got a collecting area that's very similar to the reflecting telescope. And it's all bigger and better and you get the better image quality in what's actually a smaller package than what we've got here. So that's the real advantage of them is you can get more in a smaller size. And so when we start to apply this style, this is more what we have to do professionally, right, Pete? Yeah, exactly. And these come with the price tag to match that. So they're quite an expensive telescope, something like the one that we've got here is ten to $20,000 worth of telescope. So you're really getting to that high end of what you might want to invest. Um, but if you get into it enough and, and you start to join an astronomical society or something like that, go on regular things, this is sort of the 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 high end of what you might want to use uh, within a home sense and it has the benefit as well because these things often the way they're built they can what we do automatically track the sky right and that becomes a big difference between this and the reflector and and why would that be an advantage yeah so if you're looking for more obscure things like you want to look at um, galaxy clusters or or objects that are, that are harder to find it's even astronomers don't know how to find those, but computers are really good at that. And so these have an inbuilt computer into them, so you can tell it, okay, you're here at Mount Stromwell Observatory, and the telescope knows that, and you can say, okay, I wanna go and see the jewel box cluster, and it can just automatically align itself with the jewel box cluster, and you don't have to do the work yourself. Whereas this reflector, it is all manual, so you have to either know where it is, and we often say star hopping, where you say, all right, it's, if I go to that star, then that star, then that star, and go a little bit up, I'll be close. So it's tricky, but if you're good enough, you could do a few, but as you said, even some of the harder ones you can't do. But even then, there's finding the object, and then there's also staying on the object once you're there, because we have to deal with this pesky thing called the Earth's rotation. Exactly, and so these have a mount in them that will actually match the rotation so that it will keep that object that you're interested in in the middle of the telescope for you. Whereas here, people will be looking at it and be like, oh, it's already moved and they think he bumped and it's, no, the Earth is rotating, sorry, the moon's already gone. So you have to constantly adjust. And so again, great to use for families and kids, but limited in what you can do. So. I think often what I say, and I think you probably agree, Pete, is it really depends on what you want to do. If you're really serious about it, probably something towards this, yeah? Exactly, yeah. But, you know, I often say if you're just starting out and you're not quite sure or you want to do something with kids, this is also great here. And for whatever you build, make sure that, you know, you have fun with it and also maximize the mirror size, right, Pete? Exactly, yeah. So, again, it's all about maximizing the amount of light that you can collect within the telescope will maximize how far you can see and how much detail you can get within those objects. And so we're here in this, um, what we call the outreach dome here at, at Mount Stromlo Observatory, where we uh, quite often host things like public nights or private astronomy nights, where groups can actually book in and, and come along and do stargazing nights. And this telescope that we've got here with us is one of the telescopes that 
those groups would use when they come along, if they come along on a night that, that isn't too cloudy like we've had recently here. I.e. when as long as Pete and I are not here, you'll see things you do not want as a your astronomer because you're guaranteed to cloud gaze rather than star gaze. So we've just looked at some of the telescopes that you yourself might be interested in using it at home. Um, but when we look at the telescopes that we use for research purposes, while they might be uh, the same make as something like this, they're actually on a much larger scale and we'll actually start to look at some of those right now.